I'm Emily Davis from Moody, Alabama. I am a nursing supervisor. I supervise a post-surgical floor at a major hospital and my husband Joel is a student minister. Joel and I were high school sweethearts. Um, we were married seven years before we had Noah and so we uh, were pregnant with Noah and excited about our first child and to start a family after years of going to school we were ready to, um, to move forward with the next step. I had a normal pregnancy with Noah. He was full term and we were actually scheduled for a C-section because of his large size. We arrived at the hospital for our C-section and they noticed that his heart was um, heart rate was dropping so we were rushed for an emergency C-section. They um, delivered Noah and he was not breathing. They did CPR for 10 minutes. He had five blood transfusions the morning he was born and was taken to the NICU and put on a ventilator. We were told that we would not take him home from the hospital. He improved every day. We were so thankful for the progress that Noah made and um, we thought that everything would be okay. The morning that we were discharged from the NICU, they told us that Noah's long-term prognosis was not known, but they were encouraged, so we came home and we immediately started physical therapy for Noah every month, um, trying to give him the best quality of life that we could, trying to reach milestones. Although we were a little bit behind, we were very encouraged with the results we were seeing from Noah. But when he was six months old, the neurologist diagnosed him with cerebral palsy and we were devastated. But not only did he diagnose him with cerebral palsy, he told us that he would never be able to do anything and that he would not have a good quality of life and that we just needed to take him home and love him. So Joel and I were devastated um, to hear that our son's doctor had no hope for his future. We went for a second opinion after Noah's uh, neurologist diagnosed him with cerebral palsy and we saw Dr. Law, the cerebral palsy doctor in Birmingham, and I went for him to tell me that the neurologist was wrong, but when we got there he confirmed that Noah did have cerebral palsy, but he painted a much different picture for Noah. He said that Noah's cerebral palsy would be severe from all that he was seeing but that they were there for us from that day through Noah's adulthood life, that they had resources and therapy um, and support groups, and they would get us um, through this in Noah's lifetime to help him be the best Noah that he could be. From the first day of therapy there to preschool, people started looking at Noah for what he could do instead of what he couldn't. Up until that point, all we had heard is, Noah will never, and he won't be able to. And as a parent, that is devastating. As soon as we stepped on campus there, we've never looked back. Therapists and teachers treated Noah like he could do big things, and he responded. We just saw month after month him hitting those milestones. To some families, it wouldn't even be something that they would notice, but to us, each little improvement was huge and it was something that we worked months to gain. The first day that he saw his physical therapist, Marlee, she said, are you ready for Noah to start trying to walk? And I was told that that would never, ever happen. And I was kind of blown away because Noah could not sit unassisted at that point. Week after week, we worked on taking steps and that October, he walked in his school Halloween parade in a gate trainer the entire route. The impact of United Ability is indescribable. It's just so humbling to know that people would come alongside us and want the best for Noah, just like we do, then we are just eternally grateful 